Lisa here and thank you for joining me on transforming children one step at a time. So children who are um, suffering from neurological disorders, you know, ADD, ADHD, um, autism spectrum disorders, any kind of um, brain stuff, memory, um, even our, uh, you know, elderly uh, with uh, dementia and uh, Alzheimer's, um, basically they have uh, neural inflammation there's a, um, a toxicity issue, that's pretty much the underlying issue. But especially in our chil in the children, um, they have a brain that's not properly connected or linked up. So we kind of, um, that's why I call um, my uh, uh, website, you know, Whole Child Learning and Wellness, because we're really looking at the whole child. We're looking at the ph physiological factors that are contributing to neuroinflammation and um, looking at ways how to deal with that through um, uh, detoxification, the supplementation, you know, all the other videos that we're looking at. But at the same time, we can help connect the brain, um, especially if it's uh, undeveloped and it hasn't um, had a chance to make the proper connections. Actually, sometimes in our elderly, like if we're talking about Parkinson's or some other things, sometimes there are, is disconnectivity in the brain and we can help um, do some things to help uh, reestablish some of those connections. But um, anyway, so um, the brain stem, so this part in the back of the brain, that's the first part of the brain to really start to develop. In the brain stem, it's control, it controls things like our heartbeat, our breathing, all of our automatic functions. Well, also in the brain stem um, is where our primitive reflexes. Um, uh, reside, which we'll talk about more um, later, but those are just reflexive movements. So when babies come out, um, if there's a certain stimulus, a certain type of touch or sound or um, any kind of stimulus, then the baby re um, reacts in a very um, uh, expected or um, reflexive pattern. Um, but what babies do to integrate those or to help develop the brainstem is they um, you, can, you can find them doing some rhythmical movements, some movements that um, they seem to do over and over and over again in a rhythmical fashion. So what we're going, I'm going to show you today is um, a couple rhythmic movements that you can help your child do that will help to start to link up and to mature the brainstem and to link up the brain. Because when the brainstem is mature, then it starts to link up to the limbic system, which is the center part of your brain, that emotion part of your brain. Then it starts to link up to the frontal cortex um, part of the brain, and this is more your thinking part of your brain, or the, um, you know, when you want to do stuff on purpose. So this is the automatic stuff, your emotions, and then the stuff that you do on purpose. Um, so there's two types of rhythmical movements. There's movements that um, are passive, which is what you do to them, when you, um, when the uh, child experiences a passive movement, um, it's working on the cerebral spinal fluid um, and working on the brainstem. When the baby is doing it themselves, it's actually working more on the cerebellum, even though it is activating their cerebral spinal fluid, but it's really focusing on their cerebellum, which has to do with motor coordination. But right now we're gonna work on um, just the, um, the brain stem, the cerebral spinal fluid. And these movements can be very relaxing. In fact, if you have a young child, you might wanna try this as a way to put them to sleep because it definitely can put them to sleep. Um, um, like if, you know, it's kind of a way, like it can be part of your bedtime routine as a way to uh, wind down. So the first one we're gonna do, I have him lying on his back. We're going to be lifting the knees. And the one thing I want to say is that if you have a child with Down syndrome, you never want to do it until you have um, clearance from your doctor to do anything that um, is going to activate uh, the neck movement because we know that um, children with Down syndrome um, is very typical that they have some weaknesses in some of the vertebrae in their neck. Um, and so this, uh, this particular exercise will be activating uh, the neck, so just uh, as a word of caution. So um, if their knees are up, let's see if you can, I'll kind of sit here so you, yeah, so you can still see me. Um, you, you can either be pulling from this part of the knees, you can be pushing or come from um, underneath. Depends what's most comfortable for you and your client. 
So, um, do you want me to pull um, from the top? Um, do you want me to push or pull from the bottom? Pull from the bottom. Pull from the bottom. So just kind of ask. It's just whatever's more comfortable. So all we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling, rocking gently. And if you can notice, notice his head. Okay. And notice if the head is relaxed and nodding and bobbing up and down. Okay. Because if the head um, is bobbing up and down, then there's a relaxed movement through um, through the neck. If the um, head remains stiff, then um, the, they're kind of being a little bit rigid. A lot of times what can happen is when we're stimulating the head movement inside, behind the ear, the inner ear, that's our balance system. And we can, um, some children are very sensitive to movement of the head, especially if you have a child who doesn't, um, let's say, doesn't like to do somersaults, doesn't like to be spun, doesn't like um, certain movements then you might notice if you do this and their head, can you pretend that your head's stiffening up? Let's see what it looks like. So let's say uh, you can kind of see a stiffening up in his neck, then um, you want to stop right away because we're going to be, that's kind of activating their fear paralysis reflex, which is again, a subject for another video. So just make sure that if you're doing this, that the head is nice and stiff and that you see the bobbing of the chin. And then you can do this for about a minute. Okay. These exercises aren't meant, they don't have to be done for such a long time, but just, you know, a minute or two, or, or until, especially this one, until they have had enough. They're, it's probably in about 30 seconds to a minute, they might say, okay, you know, I've uh, had enough. All right, another um, exercise, again, passive, and this time we'll use a pillow, is lay on your side. Put your um, shoulder there, just so you're... We just uh, want to make sure that there's there's some support there and we're going to the body is on the side and we are going to be pushing from the bottom of with the sit bone so here's the bone right here and we're going to put one hand on the shoulder just to um, uh, just to kind of guide you not um, we're not pushing with this hand but we're just going to put the hand here and we're going to be pushing with the bottom and you we're just going to be gently rocking on the side and we'll do that you know for 30 seconds or a minute and then you can you can turn over and you can do it also on the other side but if you're trying to put them to sleep I wouldn't suggest turning them or moving them but this can um this can help them go to sleep too and the next one will be on their stomach and this one you can um, just depends on how little your uh, munchkin is, but you can either um, hold on to their britches or you can just put your hand right here and you're going to be moving the bottom side to side. And when you're doing that, you know, just kind of notice they should have some movement. They should have movement like a, like a twisty movement up to about here. But this can, you could do this for a long time and this one also can really put them to sleep. Okay, and again, see by the twisting right here, we are really activating that cerebral spinal fluid that's inside the, um, the, the spine. Okay, so just those three movements by themselves is very relaxing, is starting to stimulate the cerebral spinal fluid, and it's actually starting to activate the brain stem. So um, just do um, those three in the, um, um, uh, you can do it in the evening before they uh, go to bed. You can do it in the morning when they wake up. Find just some routine and some time where you're going to do it and, you know, more times. If you can do it uh, various times throughout the day, it just depends on your schedule. But at least try to do it a little bit every day. And uh, until next time, uh, striving to transform our children one step at a time.